Wow, absolutely astonishing. Right, let's bring in former Premier League referee Dermot Gallagher, who joins us now. Dermot, very good evening. How do you react to that? Well, it's, you've got to take the positives out of it, Mike. It, you know, it was a terrible mistake to make. We all acknowledge that. Everybody's acknowledged that. It's what, the biggest talking point of the season, let alone this weekend. Um, what we've got to do, we've got to... Um, as Carve said, it's got to be the process. And I think one of the processes that they will have to undertake from now is the first thing the VAR says is, what is the on-field decision? Because I think if that little question had been asked, what is the on-field decision? And they said offside, you've got a start point. Once you've got a start point, you can then go forward. Unfortunately, because that question wasn't asked, they were under the impression the goal had been given on the field and that's where it all unfolded. Do we need to change the laws of the game? Um, I, I think it's easier, Mike, it's just to get a process that everybody's comfortable with and everybody can work to. You know? And As I say, that simple question, Mike, it might sound, sound very, very trivial, but that simple question would have alleviated all that went on behind. Because if you think, if I say to you, what's the on-field decision, Mike? You go, it's offside. I can then look, I'm checking for offside. It, he didn't check for offside. What he was checking was the player not offside. And that, that's how it unfolded. Now, um, we heard someone called Ollie referred to there a lot. That's Michael Oliver, the fourth official. We didn't hear his audio. Do we need to hear his audio? Well, at the moment, Mike, you know, it, there's constraints. You can't, um, you can't put everything publicly. Um, it's, it's brilliant. It's great they've been transparent. They've come out. They've taken ownership of this mistake. You know that it's been admitted very, very quickly. Um, going forward, they've shown they're transparent. Everybody's aware of what happened. Whilst you might not like what happened, at least you can understand how it happened. You know, you've got an understanding of how that mistake was made. And I think that's good because once you understand how a mistake is made, you can then alleviate that happening again. And that's, that's the big thing, Mike, isn't it? This must never, never, never happen again. That's, that's the learning point, and that's the learning point from today going forward. Dermot, can I just ask you, once they realised that a mistake had been made, do you think they made the correct decision not to stop the game? Because we heard in that audio them repeatedly somebody saying the game needs to be delayed, delay, delay, delay. But the VAR said, no, too late, there's nothing I can do. Do you think he should have done something? Was there something he could do? I can't, but unfortunately he can't. You know, the, the, the thing about football as a referee, the minute you blow your whistle and stop the game, you've got unlimited time. The time's your own, you can change your mind, you can talk with your officials, you can gather as much information as you want. But once you decide what decision you're going to make and that game restarts, there's no going back. That's it, you've got to carry on. And that's what Darren England realised. He, he realised then, you can just tell with the way he's spoken, he's made a mistake, but there's nothing he can do. He, he cannot go back, you know, that's the laws of the game. And we heard all kinds of things on Ref Watch yesterday about ideas to combat it and what would be ethically correct. But unfortunately, the, the referee has to abide by the laws of the game. He can't pick and choose which parts to apply. Dermot, take us to the human side of this. As a referee, what will it have done to those officials? Oh, Mike, I tell you, we are the worst body in the world, Mike, for um, beating ourselves up, honestly. You would not believe it. I mean, I just talk about myself, you know, which I, as you know, I don't like doing, but I can tell, so as I'm not personalising anybody else. If I made a mistake, I come off a field and I've been told I made a mistake, I'm driving home, it actually contracts my life because I just want to get home, I want to get to sleep, I want to wash it away, I want to get up the next day and I want to get my next match under my belt because I want to wash it away. And that's what happens. These guys will be absolutely beating themselves up. This is when their colleagues need to be really, really strong, ring fence them, pick them up, support them, you know, therefore go... Therefore, for the grace of God, go I type thing and say, look, you know, you're there because how good you are. You made one mistake. All right, it was a big, big mistake, but it's how you come back from it. And that's what they've got to do. They've got to ring fence their colleagues. They've got to make them feel good about themselves again so they get back on the pitch and do the job that they were doing before, Mike. Dermot, uh, you're right. We have to remember they are human beings. Uh, Dermot, thank you so much for, for listening uh, and for joining us. Thank you. Pleasure. Carve, before we, before we leave it, I think that's important, isn't it? We remember these are human beings because they're getting hammered from everywhere at the moment.
I think they are. You know, Pep Guardiola himself earlier today said that he felt that the referees had taken centre stage too much. People were talking about them too much. Uh, I'm not sure referees want to be in the spotlight. They want to do their job and they know that if we're not talking about the referees, it pretty much means that they've done a good job. They don't want to be the centre of attention. But with all the technology uh, that there is around now, they are under more and more scrutiny. The thing that I keep coming back to from listening to that audio tape is they were in such a rush to make that decision. And I think that's because we've put them under pressure to reach these decisions really, really quickly. Because when VAR was first introduced and they were taking a long time to make these decisions, everybody was complaining about the fact that it was taking too long, uh, it was ridiculous, the people in the stadiums didn't know what was going on either. So I think that's why they've tried to speed up the decision-making process. But listening to that audio and watching the video, it's obvious if you do anything at that speed, if you do anything that that's complicated and so many people are watching and depending on your decision making and you're doing it that quickly, mistakes are going to be made. And I think it's really important what we saw at the end uh, of that clip as well. Uh, PGMOL saying that the protocols are going to change. Lessons will be learned. And I know you said that a lot of people are hammering the officials. I think we should make it clear that Liverpool as a club are not hammering the officials. They're not blaming Darren England. They're not blaming uh, uh, PGMOL. What Liverpool are saying is, look, obviously a mistake was made. And in footballing terms, it was a serious, significant mistake. What we want to do is make sure that this doesn't happen again and the processes and the protocols are improved uh, to make sure that mistakes like this are never happened uh, again. Absolutely. Carve Solokol, our chief reporter. Thank you, Carve.